what's our intro going to be? <laughs> this is the intro. This is the intro. Well, we're we going. do cold. Yeah, we do cold opens. And uh, people tuning into Pickle Pod, we've been on a little bit of a hiatus. The last episode was with Tyson McGuffin. And that was the first episode in maybe like two or three months. So you're here. I'm Zane. I'm like <laughs> I'm like mini Tyson. I wear kind of short shorts, but not as short. But with a better podcast. Way better podcast immediately. And we're just going to kind of freestyle this thing. I think this is somewhat of uh, let's see how it goes and then put fuel on the fire if uh, if we like it. Yeah, send it. Yeah, I'm already wearing my I'm wearing my pickleball studio um, three five at best uh, sweatshirt, and you already gave me some crap <laughs> off air. But my my thought process is, if those idiots can do it, like why can't these idiots? Exactly. And my number one goal, which is why I was laughing when I saw you in that, because I was like, God damn it, you can't support them. Because my number one goal is to go for the jugular. We are going to be better than the pickleball studio podcast. I think they do maybe like a few thousand views, an episode on YouTube. Obviously, we've stepped up the uh, the visual game. We're in studio. We're legit now. You can see into my pores. Exactly. <laughs> Which, by the way, phenomenal skin. Oh, thank you. We can you. talk about it's that the later. Routine. It's on the skincare yep, uh, yep. It's on the topic list. Um, but yeah, if they can do it, we can do it. We're going to be like a video first pod. Oh, I like that. But we have a great listenership in audio. So, you know. Tune in to whatever you prefer, but just know that if you're watching us on video, you're going to be able to see Zane's pores, and uh, you know we're we're up in our game. We're going to be uh, we're going to be a legit pod now, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to excited to be here. Give it a whirl. All right. Um, I think kind of put together a, an initial list of topics. Uh, Major League Pickleball seems to keep coming up over and over again. So let's start there. What do we have first on the list? I think there's like a number of different things we could get to. And uh, we'll see if we ever get off the topic because I feel like, okay, it's definitely dominated the conversation lately. When I was there, it was probably the best pickleball event I've been to to date. It was the first time I sat in the stands and actually just like drank a beer, <laughs> ate some chips, and just like watched pickleball, right? It was a very, very different feel and, and vibe to it. Yeah, and, I don't uh, watch pickleball other than MLP. Yeah, like yeah. I, I legitimately – don't really ever stick around other tournaments to watch unless I'm, you know, waiting for matches or something. But uh, you can't really peel me away from those MLP tournaments. And mm -hmm. and I didn't think it could get much better from last year, but uh, they they crushed it over in uh, over in Mesa at that that big facility. It was packed, and just the the, the really cool thing was seeing these teams with their media presence. Yeah. Like yeah. half of the teams had people yeah. following them around the like entire weekend. Teams. Yeah. They're hiring. Like they're they're trying to put on like full like each individual team has full time positions open. For sure. It's insane. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. When are you gonna be the GM of one of those teams? What how come the Dink didn't buy one? Like, are you kidding me? What kind of budgets do you think we have? I don't know. We need to get some more people listening to this podcast. We do, we do want to pick a team. I'm pretty sure I already know who our team is that we kind of like support over others, like pure bias. Yeah. In our just reporting, for, for we no reason. be bias, okay, but like, you know, on social and stuff. And uh, I'll just say it, New York Hustlers, I'm a New York Hustlers fan. Now, that's kind of generic because they brought the energy. Everybody was talking about them. They were like the most fun to watch because they had four characters on their team. Um, but yeah, listen, uh, if you want to... Uh, give us a piece of of your ownership. Uh, I'll gladly accept that, and then we'll just be like the biggest fan girls of all time. Perfect. Actually, you know what? I don't think it would be a terrible idea for somebody to give up to make some sort of an agreement, like you know, five percent uh, equity in a in a company for all production or whatever that is, because I think that's worth a lot, right? You're, the dink is on site. If they're going to hire full time content. and like build out a team, we we got you covered. We have the team. There you go. Hey, look at that. Yeah. Um, I'm a little shook that you said hustlers. Like the hustlers are fine. <laughs> I think we we already established that that Tyson is a rival of ours in the podcast. Correct. Game. Yep. And anybody who has a podcast, you're a rival now. That's yeah. No, you're on the good. list. Yep. You're on the list. But like, honestly, maybe maybe you should give the attention where it's needed. Down at the bottom with uh with Team Clean, and your boy. 
right? Show, show Team Clean some love. I didn't even get to watch you guys play. We didn't play very much. We, yeah. didn't, we didn't play very much. We didn't play very many matches. But, the matches we did play weren't very long. Uh, yeah, so we could have we could have used you. That we meant could've... you got to be like a spectator and actually take more of it in in the following days. Fair. I I like glass half full. Yeah. No. I know as a I, competitor, not, I, you want to win. <laughs> your your optimism is disgusting to me so so all right so thinking of like all the teams that were in mlp were there what were like the biggest surprises i think the hustlers were kind of the ones that were like we weren't really sure whether they're going to be you know middle of the they were probably like a middle of the pack team i think everyone was like yeah they have some upside uh but we don't know who's really going to like step up and and lead them to potentially a, a finals what were some of those other teams where you're kind of like all right question mark on them uh and then what were some of like the the surprises yeah, I mean, it's it's always so tough after a draft to think of, is there a clear favorite team? For me, going into that, I really thought that the favorites were Ben's team, which I think yep. is, it was really yep. good. It was Ben, Etta, Megan, Shihan, Dazan. Is that how you say it? I think so. Um, <laughs> and uh, and Tyler Loong. I thought that was a really, really good team to yep. get Loong at 47th in the draft. Passed up Colin, which was, I think, a surprise to most. Well, I... I suppose yeah, they did pass up on on Colin, but they wanted to get two women in the in the two and three spot, and yeah, I don't know, I don't know if they could have gotten Colin with that draft but so, strategy. But so, but like, you know, their final pick is is coming, and you know, let's just say I had insight into what was happening in the draft, um, and I was there behind the scenes. I might have been, and I'm looking at Ben's team coming up. I'm thinking, oh, if. Ben gets Colin, nobody's going to beat them in in doubles. And that's a really valuable pickup in a late round. And then they went with Tyler and everyone was surprised. But then when you actually looked at the idea of, okay, Tyler's singles ability and then Tyler and, and Ben together, like, I mean, Ben can pretty much play with anybody, right? Mm -hmm. So having Colin wouldn't be that much more of a, an advantage. But Colin wasn't on the board when when – was he not? He wasn't on the board when Tyler got picked. Are you sure? I'm 100% certain. I think Colin went something like 42, something in there, and then Tyler was 47. This is So this they is would good. have had to switch a – they would have had to have picked him with their third round pick rather than their fourth. Oh, okay. Okay. See, this is good. So previously on Picklepot, I was supposed to be the uh, – the all you were the fact checker. I was the all knowing. Oh God! No wonder <laughs> yeah. nobody listened to that stuff. Yeah. And uh, now you can play that role. So this is great. I can just be wrong, and I know you're just gonna be like, uh, actually, uh, you can uh, you can set me straight. So. We need a Jamie. Well, we, we need a Jamie. We, need a we Jamie. really do. And I want to like pull up videos and watch him live and like comment on like Jamie, pull that up. Yeah, pull that up. Like, we. You know what? This is we are what five minutes into our first podcast. We are hiring for <laughs> yeah. a for an intern, uh, somebody that we can both verbally abuse and is also good yep. at search engines and YouTube. So Un unpaid for verbal, the first three years. Got to prove yourself. <laughs> yeah, three years. Verbal punching bag. Good with YouTube. Yep, and Google. Yeah, and, and Chat GPT now. Some some light fact checking light fact checking. and you can't use chat gpt because i asked chat gpt a bunch of pickleball questions and it was pure gibberish really yeah sat there and just like asked it a million you know who's this player uh what's the hotbed how do you hit a third shot drop just complete jumbled mess was it i asked it how to become a professional pickleball player and it actually gave a really good answer like it laid out five different steps i'm like okay that, can you, that is do actually you know what they are off the top of your head it was like, you know, there you need to you need to train and dedicate it and it's a skill based yeah. sport, whatever. So they were they were somewhat vanilla, but they they hit some of the things like start playing local tournaments and then play regional and mm -hmm. then start playing national and then mm -hmm. go international, which was not really a thing. Mm -mm. But um they were like make make connections and join a, a professional pickleball association. Um so that that I don't know if okay. that was just lucky that they said join a professional pickleball association. So it was somewhat coherent is all I'm saying. I'm not giving it any credit for that. That doesn't sound like fair. that great of advice. Fair. I feel like there'd be better advice out there. It could have been worse. Um, okay. So I think one of the things about MLP that everybody's talking about, obviously, was the energy factor, right? And like hustlers were the epitome of that. Um, and I think I'm just generally surprised that this wasn't more of a consideration in drafting and more of a talking point ahead of the draft because if you go back to mlp austin one 
who was it? The Chimeras, which was like, um, yeah, it Lee, was, it was uh, Lee, uh, yeah, uh, it was Lee, Whitwell, AJ, Anna Lee, right. and Kyle Yates. And Whitwell led with the energy and like hyped up the team and was ultimately the MVP. Mm -hmm. In that same one, remember the ATX Pickleballers went like pretty far, which was like Altoff. And was Altoff was they it were undefeated the very first, into first? Where are we talking about 2021? Or, yeah, like or, the very first one. The very first one. Altoff wasn't on one in 2021. So I'm your It was the second Austin MO. It was the second Austin. And yeah, Altoff and that team did did quite well. Yeah. I think they went undefeated through pool play. Mm hmm got a, a buy they were top top seed i think right and then they lost to the eventual champions which you know obviously was uh it was bound to happen yep. of course but yep. like altoff couldn't couldn't sustain that energy so against me do you text Irina every day and say thank you for for carrying us she's oh, obviously for sure. the she, mlp go we're all npcs do you think that is the cheat code you just draft Irina and then you win According to the meme pages, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are a meme page. So that's uh, true. There you go. That's true. You're not as good as some of the other uh, ones. I'm just name gonna, I'm just gonna say it. Name Memes em. of pickleball is unbelievable. Is they I are. found out who it is though. Really? I don't even know who it is. <laughs> I won't reveal. I'll be respectful. Um, but so it's not it's not just like my my theory is people are just DMing this account with their own memes that they're making. No. This person is this uh, person like a is, legit memer. Like there's has, no possible way. I, no, no, no. I, I don't. I do not believe that this memes of pickleball person is making all these memes him or her, his or herself. It's a dude for sure. Like I would bet my, yes. my something on it. <laughs> on so that. maybe yeah, right. Maybe there's a team behind him, but whether it's him or this team, they have a track record of being like very good at memes, like millions of followers. Interesting. Yes. Wow. Okay. And when I first started seeing those memes like surface, I was legitimately frustrated. I was like, because there weren't many good memes out there, right? Like there were some accounts who do. They do were it pretty here garbage there. until like three months ago. Right. And uh, so we would do memes every once in a while. And I'd always think like, okay, well, we've got the best memes unlocked. That's for sure. And then they came along and I was like infuriated. <laughs> and <laughs> Time uh, to exit the meme game. <laughs> yeah. So we started stepping up our uh, our memes lately. And then now you got like Trot Pickleball who uh, love those guys there. Did you meet uh, him at MLP? I knew them before. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. There's a relationship. Um, I, I knew him from, I don't know if he wants to be anonymous. I'll ask him and we can talk about him next time. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've played with him. Good player. Uh, young guy, probably my age, around 30. And uh, yeah, no, they're they're uh, they're pretty ridiculous. But I think they're bringing something to like the pickleball content game that was lacking, which is just sort of like raw, unfiltered, kind of like unrated, just hilarious, like hilarious comedy. Right. For sure. Absolutely. Memes of pickleball doing the same thing. But now there's all these copycat accounts um, that... Uh, might want to throw in the towel. <laughs> Some of them are going for pure shock value. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, that person went there. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Um, I would say generally people within the pickleball community are being a little bit more open about some of the stuff that was previously, it was like everybody knew, but wouldn't talk about, and we won't talk about it here, but you know, people are getting a little more uh, unfiltered across the board. Yeah. Well, I think it's very interesting. I think the, uh, I think that the kumbaya era of pickleball mm -hmm. is quickly dying. Yeah, very quickly and, dying. And for, I, and I think it's a good thing. I think it brings agreed. It, it just makes everything that much more entertaining. Conflict is interesting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when there's animosity on the court, which I think there was like a lot of in um, in Mesa, it makes it so much more fun. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you want the you want the rivalries, and you know sometimes the rivalries can be completely on court. If you're thinking of yeah. Federer and Nadal, who are who are mm -hmm. buddies, like it's it's a treat to watch when you could watch Federer and Nadal play. Right. But now, when you get to watch, uh, you know, Kokonakis and Stan Wawrinka with the famous Nick Kyrgios comment of Kokonakis banged your girlfriend, <laughs> that adds another element to sure to watch those things. Sure right? does. And. I think it's uh, it's not always fun, especially for those people that are that are involved. But at the end of the day, like we have all signed up for, um, I guess putting ourselves on a court to be 
entertainment, whether we realize it or not, whether that was our intention in the beginning or, or not, we are all on the pickleball court to, to entertain viewers. Yeah. And, and there's no better way. People love the the interpersonal stuff as much as they love the, mm-hmm. the on court stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I wish I could come up with better examples from other sports, but I'm just a sheltered tennis guy. Well, so. I, I think pickleball is unique in that the community is so small. Everybody's traveling together all the time. So it sort of lends to more conflict, I think, than you would uh, typically see and maybe more like serious conflict, right? No, I agree. So I went to uh, I went to a small private high school. I had 50 kids in my graduating class. Okay. And explain some things, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, you thought I was homeschooled, <laughs> uh, but I had you 50 know who kids. Was homeschooled? Were you homeschooled? No, a three five, a certain three five. We know. Oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah so. for sure. That makes sense why he can't get up past the I three five. I actually didn't know that about him. And in Mesa, we were we were at dinner, and uh, I was like, "Yeah, pickleballers are weird. Like, a bunch of them are like homeschooled." They kind of, he's like, "Dude, <laughs> I was homeschooled." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Exactly." It's like, you're making my point for me. Uh, uh, where were we before that? I was about to like, make some really insightful you, point. You but... went to a 50 person high school. Oh right, I knew everything about everyone. Graduating class or like graduating class 50, 200 okay. in the in the entire thing. Yeah, but yeah. I knew everybody. Small. I knew everybody's thing, and one right. of the things that. I enjoyed doing in high school was starting rumors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I'll bring my talents back to, to pickleball. Do you, did you ever have a, your, um, that app Yik Yak? I did. That brutal. was, that was in college for yeah. me. Yeah, me too. That was in college. Absolutely. But, uh, that was brutal. Same thing. So we get a Yik Yak for pickleball. There you go. But when there are these smaller communities, stuff circulates much quicker. Mm-hmm. Right. So I went to, I went to college, university of Wisconsin, Whitewater. It's like 12,000. I didn't know much about anybody other than my tennis team, but at, at my high school, I knew everything about everyone, and I knew how to get under people's skin. I knew how to uh, how to start rumors. I, I enjoyed pot. stirring the pot. I mm-hmm. still like stirring the pot. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And now there's all these uh, meme accounts and anonymous uh, commenters across like the different places you can um, I don't know, interact with people in pickleball. And uh, they stir the pot, right? Mm -hmm. They make it that much more palpable when two players are on the court who have some sort of understated conflict. And it makes it like, it's, it's unavoidable. Everybody knows that these two players like hate each other. Right. And people aren't super shy about it anymore. Um, What do you think about like um, the idea of prioritizing business decisions over like loyalty. I think the obvious example recently, and she took a lot of heat for it, was the Catherine situation uh, at Nationals. But I don't think she's unique. It wasn't the first time it's happened. Um, and I'm not talking about her specifically, but uh, you know, with other players. It's the most high profile, I yeah, guess. Yeah. And it, it definitely got the most attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I, I think I was one of the few who was like, okay, but you're competing for money. You're competing for to win, to build your brand, why wouldn't you choose, be somewhat selfish and choose the best, the person that's going to give you the best chance at winning, right? And I think we're, we're starting to see, uh, some, some more of that happen where it's like, yeah, we're a small community, everybody's friends, everybody knows each other, but ultimately like I'm here to make a living and a career and I'm going to prioritize business decisions over like being the, the nice guy. I think you can do that to an extent. However, here, here's my thoughts on it. Pickleball is rapidly evolving, right? Yep. You only have a certain window in which to to make your, your money, to make your reputation. Okay. I understand that. Business yep. decisions there, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't – I think that people might be putting too much weight on winning one title with this business decision. Yeah, right. Five years from now – most of us aren't going to be relevant, I don't think. Mm-hmm. However, we will be remembered based on general characteristics. Not whether I won, you know, okay. three yeah. majors or four majors, <clears throat> but the type of person I was and the type of impact that I had on the game. Mm-hmm. So I think you, you're you trading the the micro at the expense of the macro, meaning like I might win this one tournament, yep. but now the entire – I'm going to have a tarnished reputation mm-hmm. unless people forget about it for mm-hmm. a, to a certain extent. So I think that 
I personally think that a player should not drop partners. If you make a commitment, honor the commitment. Now, be selective about that. I have no problem. If I ask if I ask Ben to play a tournament and he says no, I'm like, that's fine, right? I have I have no ego in that regard. Who whoever it is, right? right. Ben's just an example. He he wouldn't play a tournament with me, right? Because he's got he plays with with Colin. But just say no, right? Don't say yeah, sure, we'll play some. Mm-hmm. Have me locked up for where I think we're playing the entire year together, right. and then say hey, sorry, I'm actually playing with Colin. That's what would piss me off. Sure, right? So just be. I think just being honest about it is is fine to people who can deal with somebody who's honest Mm -hmm. but i still think that even if this is a business decision it's an incorrect business decision in the in the long term Mm -hmm. so that's my take on it don't commit to something that don't pretend to commit to something if you're going to walk that back in the future it's a bad that is a bad business move yeah even if you think it's good in the short term interesting yeah what do you think about it um I tend to be kind of on the, on the other side of it, but like, you know, I'm not, I'm not in the world. Right. Uh, and, uh, I'm sure if I were, my perspective would be very different, but I guess I tend to, I don't necessarily agree with some of those decisions, but I see the, where they're coming from in terms of like, you got to put yourself in the, in the best position to build your career and be successful. So. Yeah, no, I certainly see it. Right. Yeah. Like if I had a once in a lifetime, you know, opportunity to say, hey, <clears throat> Ben at Nationals says, uh, you know, Colin's hurt. Can you come play? Like that'd be pretty enticing. Yeah. Right. Sure. Like I, I understand that decision. But even if you're looking at it, if I'm looking at it only from dollars and cents mm-hmm. in terms of over my entire career, I think that that's a negative impact on my. Yeah on my overall income for 20 sure, years. Sure. And then you would also have to, and then it's going to be case by case, right? Because it's like certain players make money in different ways. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, um, those decisions might impact them in different ways accordingly. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, I think we'll, I think in some cases, like we'll see <laughs> more of it. And then I think some players are now like, you know, even if they weren't directly involved, they're like scarred by seeing what has happened in the in the community and it'll kind of like make them more inclined to uh, make the nice guy decision the, the next time around, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's interesting how this leaked out to the general public, right? I'd have to assume that something like this is going on in tennis, right? There's got to be some people dropping their doubles partner for other – others but i i never heard of it i never that drama never reached the tennis <clears throat> end consumer like it does right. the pickleball yeah yeah consumer well i think i think like you know the people involved who are pissed are like a lot they're leaking that information for sure you know but maybe for some reason it seems like it doesn't make a big stink in tennis where it does here right and i wonder why that is people talk the YouTube smaller the, uh, smaller community, I guess. The YouTube comments, yeah, gotta love it. Well, there's so much, there's so much anonymity in pickleball, right? Like on Facebook, in the Instagram comments, these it's these like meme accounts, um, in the YouTube live stream stuff, like in these discords, and people just have this, and the community is small enough that they're all exposed to that, and people have this ability when they're you know, under a veil to, or they just feel more comfortable to just like say whatever they want and be kind of ruthless. And, uh, I don't know, maybe when, maybe when the pickleball, like the, the people, the amount of people watching pickleball just gets bigger, like that'll, that'll fade out a little bit when the community isn't as, um, small and like intimate. It's like everybody's interacting with each other, right? Like I feel like everybody knows everything. <laughs> right. It, it's like my my high school we example live, we where live you have like one person the stirring the pot yeah. and kind of everybody knows about right. it. But yeah. if I was stirring the pot at my college where there's 12,000 people, that wouldn't get to the same extent, right? You have you have Odoth out there like, <laughs> yeah. you know, stirring the pot. Uh-huh. But when, when there's, you know, 10,000 people commenting on a live stream instead of 100, if that. Mm-hmm then he probably just gets drowned out. 
I think, uh, I think, you know, there was like documentary crews following different teams around in pickleball. It's not the first time it's happened where people are like trying to, sim- there's, I think there's like a few different documentaries like in the works right now and everybody wants like the F1 for, for pickleball, but sure. I think there should be one that's just like the, the housewives of like the desperate housewives or, um, I don't know, whatever, you know, that show is. Right? Yeah, for sure. Just the salacious version of it, only playing up those narratives I'm one hundred percent for it. That would draw everybody in because then it, it's not a sport; it's a it's a sport, but really it's a reality TV show. I'm not gonna lie to you right now, Thomas. I've been watching The Real Housewives of <laughs> yeah. the Potomac. My fiance like Jenny, Potomac, Maryland. Yeah. Okay. My so they're fiance, just doing it everywhere now, huh? It's it's everywhere. <laughs> I think they have. That's the only one that I've ever watched. I yeah. just started watching it with her. It's like there's there's another season coming out or something. Right. That stuff is wild. Uh huh. And sign me up for the the real house husbands of pickleball or there whatever. Is a, there's another um, there's another crew working on a pickleball documentary that's going to be a little bit different. But basically, they're going to take a bunch of close to five O players, put them in a house for a month, and they're going to make them compete. Like they're going to live in that house, play every single day. The winners are going to actually become a minor league or a, um, a, ch- a challenger team in major league pickleball. Really? Yes. <laughs> what, how? That's about all the information I have at this how point. How does that work but administratively with a, with a draft of, of these players? Like I don't have all that detail, but I've talked to the guy putting it together. I know that there are like the organizations that matter have signed off on it. Wow. And so I think that's coming down the down the road here, and apparently it's going to be in like two months. Interesting. Yeah. So that'll be. Is that going to be like televised? Uh huh. They're going to make a series out of it. Damn. Yeah. So that's pretty. I wonder who their first handful of players are because they need to be somebody that's good enough talent, but not right. too good. And you and right and you you can't be like you can't have already played major league football right. It's going to be like the sure. all these people on the cusp. Right. Um, but they're also going to, I mean, they're going to cast people based on like, you know, are you like, do you have a personality that's going to be compelling? Are you the Tyson apostle of pickleball where you're going to like, you know, stir the pot and instigate and be that guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tyson. I love him. <laughs> yeah. I love him. I, I knew he was a, a, a cool dude with, from his first words of, well, maybe not a cool dude, but a guy who's willing to speak his mind from yeah. his first words in Survivor. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. I forgot about that. So you, me, and Tyson were in a text group. Yeah. And you and me started watching the the his season of Survivor from like episode one, just like texting him, being like, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I wonder who that's going to be. Yeah. Like, I guess It'll, I don't even know. Probably somebody who... we won't even know right now. Or maybe right. they're like, you know, we kind of know who they are, but they're not like in the in the scene yet. Right. Or not, not quite in the pro scene. Yeah. <clears throat> that'll be super I mean, gotta, interesting it's got to be you have to have a certain degree of talent if you're going to ultimately play in challenger right like that's definitely well, for one sure one of the requirements so i'd assume they'd have you know a coach with them there every day mm-hmm. or they might just be the bottom of the bottom challenger team mm-hmm. which yeah yeah interesting so i think there's a number of these things kind of in the cooker right i've now. i've that talked be... to a lot of people who are doing some some documentaries it's yeah. the hot thing to to do and i yeah. think that the the, the the press is accelerating in pickleball s- tremendously. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't five months ago where any time a major news source was saying anything about pickleball, it would be plastered everywhere across right. the forums. We are, now you can't keep up with it. Can't keep up. Literally can't keep up with it. It's insane. And even on like the um, like the blogging, the the news side, right? Like our so we have a. We have a blog, right? Like we always kind of consider ourselves like the front page of Pickleball. We try and stay on top of the latest and and breaking news. Now we're shameless, shameless plug. (laughs) Uh, Check out the blog. Check out the Dink blog (laughs) at www. Yeah. I don't even know what it is. Uh, The Dink Pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. The Dink Pickleball.com. I probably Uh, should figure that out eventually. Uh, But uh, now we're competing with like all these major new, like legit outlets. And it's like, okay. I was worried about like the little guy pickleball blog that was going to come compete with us. Now I'm worried about like, you know, ES, literally ESPN. <laughs> I see Forbes writing stuff like, all the time too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Forbes, ESPN. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's tough to uh, tough to compete with that. So <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we have to think about our strategy. You still a have the a we little bit more insider. of an insider. Yeah, for, for sure. now. Yeah, right? and we know th- and we know what people <clears throat> actually care about versus they're just writing like generalist stuff for like the mass consumer. Where you know we do that as well, but we also are like we're you know we're for. We used to have this cliche line. We dropped it. Um, but it was like four pickle nerds. It was like buy pickle nerds, four pickle nerds. Like mm-hmm. it's kind of still that vibe, right? Like so the pickleball insider, the people who um, know the world and uh, want to keep up with the stuff that we actually care about. So. Yeah. Well, I think that the interpersonal drama, the chippiness, all the <laughs> antics and whatnot, I think that that's something that anybody can can understand. And I think that's one of the things, the biggest uphill battle that, that pickleball faces is the um, – is is it going to translate to a regular person who doesn't know anything about pickleball? Yeah. Is somebody going to be flipping through channels and decide to stay and watch yeah. pickleball? And yeah. what are you? What are your thoughts on? It's been a relatively hot topic since Major League Pickleball. But what are your thoughts on some of the the an, on court antics? I thought it was awesome. So I know that like a text went out where they're going to start to regulate like coaches and players jumping onto the court that aren't like playing in the match, like to, you know, celebrate points and like getting loud and rowdy and stuff like that. But I thought it was awesome. Um, I thought it, it really built the chemistry. I mean, I t- sent an email to, you know, all the major league pickleball guys after just kind of doing a recap, like what I thought of the event. And one of the things I said I loved was the fact that the players, not even in the, not even on the court playing, but on the bench and the coaches themselves were so into it. Right. Like there were moments and maybe this is where the line was crossed where team owners on a bench are like shouting at the refs. Right. That I think like, you know, the refs shouldn't be subjected to that. Like that's a really high pressure scenario, but (laughs) it, it, it's no different than any other sport. You got Mark Cuban chewing, chewing, uh, like yelling in your ear if you're uh, refing a a Dallas game. Exactly. And like the NBA knows that, you know, sometimes that crosses the line, but they also know that that gets people hyped up for sure. And it adds an element that, uh, you know, it draws you in, it draws the outsider in. And I think if anything, it's like, you know, trying to overcorrect right now at the expense of potentially creating compelling narratives that bring in the outsider could be a mistake. Um, and, uh, so who, who knows what changes with that? It's all like a, a learning process. One of the things I did see though, kind of tying the two ideas together, what we we're just talking about, like, you know, the James Ignatowicz call on the, <laughs> the split step. And then you see like SB nation take that and be like, oh, this is what pickleball is. Pickleball is a joke. Like extrapolating that out as a representation of the sport. That's a bad, that was, that was a, a bad take. I, I have to lazy, think. But they're just trying to get clicks and stuff. And uh, so, I mean. Don't you, that, don't you think that was the, I personally have not seen a worse call in pickleball in the 10 years that I've been a part of the sport. Oh God, this is my take on that. So the game was really, really chippy. Uh, it was, it was getting super contentious and the players were going back and forth. They were yelling at each other. And then I think the ref in, in, and was it, I don't know if, who the ref was, but in their mind, they were like, okay, we need to dial this back. So the next thing I see that's even slightly out of line, I'm calling it, I'm going to make an example out of it to rein everybody back in and make a statement. Hey, this is where it ends. Like behave basically. And they were, and, and so they were looking for that next thing. And then James did the split step and they the called split it that step heard around the world yeah, of, and you know, I guess, I guess everybody's saying like, okay, James has really active feet. He's always doing that. Um, but I think in that high pressure scenario, the, the ref was just trying to rein everybody back in and that's what happened. If I'm trying to like be on the ref side there, right. And give that perspective, if I'm trying to take the opposite viewpoint, cause I think the overwhelming narrative was that was the worst call ever. And there, it, there's no place for that. And uh, it should never, ever happen again. But I can see maybe, maybe a little bit of like what went into that. Um, sure. And I'm totally- You're being like, a little contrarian. I'm, I like it. I I'm like it. I'm projecting what I think happened onto the ref. Maybe that's not what happened. Maybe it was just a completely blown call. But yeah. I would like to see, you know, the referee give warnings to each bench. And then honestly, but well, that was the hustle. Was that the hustlers and the, and the fives? Yeah. Fives, yeah, fives versus 
Was it the Huskers? Was it in the semis? I, I can't remember. On Saturday? I think so, right? Honestly. Or was it the morning on Sunday? I, I, don't, uh, I don't know. But I would have liked to see it turn into an all-out fight. His like fight, dugouts yeah. cleared. Yeah. Like That's where I was going. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Because I, I think that the Hustlers would have taken that. Yeah. Like Big H... Definitely, like the, def the guy definitely fights dirty. Yeah, uh, but he's just—he's not going to get anywhere against Rafa. If, but if Big H hits a growth spurt, <laughs> big if Big H gets big, <laughs> yeah. oh boy! If the name Big H stops being ironic, this is going to be very. <laughs> <interesting>. <laughs> but so, where do you think the line is? Because I, I think the line for me is much farther than than most, right? I think pickleball's already crossed the line of what's acceptable in tennis. And it, I don't think pickleball is looking back. Like the amount of of chatter between players on the court is already more, unmatched. I don't I don't think I think you can say that it's the chatter is more consistent and like universal. But you've never seen, I mean, in tennis, every once in a while, there's a blow up where yeah. some player is absolutely smashing their racket, screaming at them face to face. And uh, we haven't seen that in pickleball yet, right? So the instances where it does happen in tennis. So I could be the first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By the way, that's how you build your brand. 100%. Right? There's uh, gonna, there's space for a, for a bad boy. Uh, of, we've, of been, we've been saying this for over a year, right? Like, you know, whoever is sort of on the cusp of being a good player but wants to build their brand. Start, start being a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Right. It is so unbelievably true. Right. But I want, I want to circle before we talk about that. Okay. I want to establish what you think the line is. Like, I'll, I'll give you my, my opinion. Okay. Some people have, some people find Julian irritating, mm -hmm. right? He's loud, obnoxious, yep. like he wins a point. He'll let you know. We had a reader email that was like, uh, just lambasting Julian being like this, there's no place for this. And I actually used to kind of agree with them more, but I think I've evolved and I've sort of come to love his energy because I think he is bringing everybody else's energy forward. And I think that needs to happen, right? So I think you need people out on the front lines, kind of pushing the boundaries and leading the way. I agree. But the one thing that makes Julian's, I think, behavior acceptable and i like it i have no problem even when he's screaming on the other side of the court playing against me is julian unless you are unless you are in a uh like a chippy match with him uh -huh. he's pumping himself up he's not right, in right, your right. face unless unless you started something yeah right julian and i have had so many close matches good matches where he's yelling and screaming but he's never yelling and screaming at me mm -hmm. if i hook him he's gonna be up my ass right, for the rest right. of that match. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. he is going to be, he's going to be in my face. He's going to be, but like until that point, he is to himself, pumping himself up, mm -hmm. talking to the crowd and whatnot, but it has nothing to do with me. He won't crap talk me. He won't do anything. But yeah. once that boundary is crossed where something chippy ha happens in the match, then it's, then I think it's fair game for him. Yeah. And I, I tend to think that that is probably where the line should be drawn as as soon as you start antagonizing antagonizing going directly at another player i think that is i think that's the line right. the, the line is going at somebody else mm -hmm. right you is there an instance and, of that that you can i think there were plenty i think the line was crossed several different times in mlp that's from a player perspective right that yeah. that's that's where my personal thoughts are but from a organizational standpoint, like, don't we kind of like to see that? Yes. Right. Don't you like, I mean, hockey guys are allowed to, are allowed to fight. They're allowed yeah, to take yeah. the gloves they off and the fight. Reps. Have you ever seen the mic'd up? Of like, hockey? When what's really happening, like what they're really saying out there. Yeah. The refs will like chirp the players. Players will chirp the refs. It's awesome. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. But the refs are all like hockey guys, you know? Okay. They're, they're, you know, they, they drop the gloves if they could. Right? Whenever I chirp the refs, they can't hear me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, hockey guys are a different breed. <laughs> <laughs> They're very, 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 very different. True that. So, um, yeah. I think the the I think that the energy and the chippiness, the antics. I think it's let's let it let's let it go for a little bit. If we need to, we can rein it back in. It yeah. shouldn't be difficult. I think it'd be very easy for MLP to implement a a fining system down the road. 
which can pretty quickly and easily take this stuff and nip it in the bud mm -hmm. if it needs to be. Yeah. But I think it's making things way more interesting to watch. Yeah, I think you just don't want to overcorrect right now. Oh, for sure. Right. 100% agreed. And eliminate something that is enhancing the game from a viewership standpoint. Sure. One thing that I do think needs to be corrected, though, is our challenge system. Mm -hmm. So right now, teams get one challenge, and if they're wrong, they lose it, as well as a, a timeout. Yep. And Pickleball is following the same exact, I guess, uh, format as as other sports, yep. where there's a the call yeah. on the on the on the court, and then in order to overturn it, you need to be a hundred percent certain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the uh, on challenges? Because right now, I think it completely incentivizes blatantly bad line calls. Sure, and that is, I mean, I think that's a an interesting issue in itself, right? It's like, um, I, I just think it's so difficult to if you're a rep, if you're a player really know unless you have this like eagle eye perfect view looking directly from above the ball like down onto the line but that's the worst view directly above the ball is the worst yeah yeah right, you because want of the compression directly on right. the ground so you need multiple yeah, yeah. you need you, you need, need probably angles you probably need eight to twelve cameras right. in order to make it and so for a ref to make a definitive call and overturn something i mean they better be right is that <laughs> That can obviously not to state that like completely alter the outcome of a, of a match, right? So, yeah. But I think we've seen multiple instances where they do make the overturn and uh, it's a miscall. Sure, but I I actually don't have a huge an enormous problem with that. First off, I would like to know what the second referee is doing for the most part. There's two referees on the court all these times, yeah. at least at Major League Pickleball. One of them is watching the kitchen. Are they both watching the kitchen? I think they are. I think one should be watching the kitchen, and I think one should be watching the ball. I assume that's what – I assume that was the case. Maybe not. I don't – I actually I don't, don't know. know what that second ref does because I feel like there is many, many circumstances where – one ref will say, I didn't see it. The head ref will say, I didn't see it. And then they'll go to the, the like secondary almost ref. Almost always, but yeah. Almost always. <laughs> and then the second ref will also say, I didn't see it. And they'll give, they'll do this, right? Sometimes I think they panic. Maybe, but sidebar, no professional referee. I get so unbelievably triggered when I see a referee make this, make this, yeah. right? Well, wait, what does that mean? It means that they didn't see it. Okay. Be like, we need a different sign for that okay. because I just like, I get so irrationally triggered you just when think it looks ridiculous. I think it looks ridiculous. I think you're out there for a reason, which is to see stuff. If you didn't see it, just make something up. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but just please, I never want to see a ref do this again. Right. Um, but I don't actually know whether the second referee is, is watching the ball because it seems like most of the time the referees don't make a definitive call. Or they say, not enough to overrule. Meaning, like, I call the ball out, and they think... I tend to think that the term, not enough to overrule, means I think it was probably in, but I'm too much of a sissy to call it out. Uh -huh. Here's what I think needs to happen. Okay. So, so and I'm passionate about this. this if good, you can't yeah. tell, I'm sweating so, I mean, through my... up here. Yeah, exactly. So, so, in every other sport, there is a call made on the field. No MLB umpires go like this, right? So there's a call made on the field. The challenge system then needs to be 100% certain in order to overrule a call made on the field. But the only call being made on the field sometimes is by a completely biased party. Me. I make a call. I call it out. Both the referees are, are not, did not see it. Mm -hmm. Why do we, why are we, why do we have to be 100% certain in order to overturn my call as a player, right? I think it should be 51% certain when the player's the one that makes the call. Yeah. So let's say I call the ball, now different circumstance, I call the ball out. The referee overturns me and says it was in. Mm -hmm. Now there is actually a call being made by an official on the court. 
that's a situation where we can say, okay, we need it to be 100% certain to overturn. But when a player is the last person to make a call, I think your video replay should only be 51% certain. Mm -hmm. If you call the ball out and you're the last one to make a call, I think we look at the video and right. we just make our best guess. Yeah. Anyway, that's my thought. Because right now, there is no repercussion to me calling every point-ending shot out. I don't lose a challenge. I'm not getting fined by the league. Like, there's a chance that the referees just don't see it. Mm -hmm. Every point-ending shot should be called out under the current incentive structure. Like, with the exception of, obviously, you're going to catch a ton of crap from the crowd. It's going to look yeah. bad on your image. But that's the only concern right now is your image. What if you get somebody who's not concerned about their image? Yeah. Back so. to dropping, uh, dropping a player or dropping a, a partner, right? Because you're making a... A selfish decision. I mean, making a bad call in match. I mean, that's just that's such a small, instantaneous decision. That um, I mean, we all know the players who are known for that. Yeah, <laughs> and there's a few of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, some get uh, some get uh, white glove treatment, and some are known for their bad calls, and it's pretty obvious. And there's legitimately like consistently extra refs brought out to their matches <laughs> right <laughs> yeah there are some some brutal ones and that's that's you know this is mlp where you actually have a, a challenge system too you know some of these matches on back courts uh and, you know in a in a ppa or app or whatever mm -hmm. where you have one ref that's actually their only job is to watch the kitchen that's tough when you're going up against one of those players mm -hmm. so yeah. Well, it sounds like they're actively looking into specifically that. And so were you, did you get the text that, um, I was listening to, and I didn't know about this. I was listening to it feels right. And they were talking about, uh, like a text that went out about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, exactly what we were talking about earlier, like the, um, players coming on the court, coaches coming on the court and like, you know, how much that can happen. And then of course, like the challenge system and, um, and line calls and stuff like that. Yeah, I got the text. They said that it would be addressed. Um, I think that the coaches on court should be addressed. I think, you know, you can make it like a pitch clock or a, a serve clock in, in tennis. The coach can do whatever they want. The The teammates can do whatever they want, but that ball needs to be served 20 seconds from the end of it. Yeah. You can go screw around, whatever. You yeah. Can, you can throw yourself a party if you want, mm -hmm. but 20 seconds later, you got to serve the ball. Yeah. I think that's an I think that's an easy fix and it doesn't dilute the energy that coaches are are bringing. And I think the 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 what were what the main culprit was was I think from what I understand Lee and James Ignatovich were were going at it in mm -hmm. on the court for extended periods of time. Mm -hmm. Give them 15 seconds to do their thing and then the other team and then the score is called. Yeah. Solved. Okay. So there's sort of all this, uh, there's, there's like these instances of wiggle room, uh, that these players can use to their advantage with no repercussions. I think another one of those, which has been a, uh, topic of conversation for even longer is the paddles mm -hmm. and what you can get away with different batches of paddles, um, altering paddles. Mm -hmm. And I played with some paddles recently where I go, oh my God, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, this is next level. And sometimes I look at some of these players with sponsorships from paddle brands that don't deliver or I wouldn't say don't it, – it's not that they don't deliver an advantage. It's that they – it's like a, they're – it's a disadvantage relative to some of these other like insanely poppy and gritty paddles. And mm -hmm. if I'm these players, I'm either going to – my paddle brand and I'm saying you guys got to innovate because I'm at I'm at a disadvantage out here or I'm actively thinking I'm going to go to one of these other brands and I'm going to get a deal with them because if I don't play with the best paddle possible you know I'm I'm uh my chances of winning are are that much less right like uh and so I I think like yeah I mean generally these there's all these paddles right now where it just seems to be unregulated. The testing process is a little bit questionable. And uh, I don't know. I just think some players have a pretty significant advantage if they're using the, the, the right paddle in any given match. 
thoughts? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's something that I'm, I'm passionate about because I think it's, uh, it's a major, major problem at the, at the pro level. Um, what are some of the things that you think are, that people don't realize are happening to like juice paddles essentially? Um, well, I think that the, the main thing is that some people will say, oh, this paddle is USA Pickleball approved, but now with raw carbon fiber paddles, the batches that are created are all very different because it's a it's a raw material. So you could send a factory the same exact specifications and you could have on the on the certain testing, you could have some that come in feeling smooth and some that come in feeling so like you think that's just inconsistency in the manufacturing process. Yes, inconsistency leads to some amount of plausible deniability. Right. So yes, there is inconsistency, but the top players can get from their paddle companies the grittiest that they want. Mm -hmm. Meaning like if they're doing some sort of testing at the factory, we're going to send out the legal ones to the general public. Yeah. We'll test them. We'll give our player the, the grittiest ones or, or whatever, the, the, the poppiest ones. Right now, the, the PPA implemented a way to test the, the surface friction, but there's no way to test um, other elements of a paddle that make it legal or illegal, like how much pop it has. Um, I think you can test how much how long the the ball dwells on the paddle i don't know if that's are there any regulations around that that i might be speaking out of I, so dwell time i think is very important for well spin time. generation the amount of time that the, the ball no i know what it is but i've just never heard that term before do people say that dwell time um i don't know i say it is yeah. that, that good enough for you bro <laughs> <laughs> i would always i would always say like um it's it's like some paddles are more like tennis strings right right where there's with a slingshot then, effect yeah yeah thing. exactly yeah yeah, yeah right, right and i think that those paddles would have the longest dwell time yeah, yeah. meaning mm -hmm. it's, it's a slingshot effect so it'll come into the paddle the ball will compress and sort of like sink into the paddle and get shot out mm -hmm. and i think that that's a I think that that's the next problem because obviously there's there's grit on the surface, which is only one element of generating spin, but the slingshot effect generates both spin and power. Yeah. Where a rough surface spin only slingshot effect is spin and power, and I think that's even more difficult to to test on site. Now PPA has those little stare at testers yeah. or whatever. Those don't work. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty. <laughs> I think that's a pretty tough thing to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, you you don't want to speak out of turn. I will. I mean, we've seen the videos of these tests being done and how inconsistent they are on the same paddle in the same spot. They'll give you a different reading. So oh, for sure. That um, when seems I'm, to be a problem. It's it's a tough thing to test. I went and I had my Pro XR paddles made on. I got them on Wednesday. I'm playing at a PPA on Thursday, mm -hmm. right? I had I had Don test one of my paddles, and the same spots he'd he'd put the thing on. Be like, this is this is 42. He'd rotate it 90 degrees. Like, okay, in, in the exact same spot, it's yeah. now 25. Yeah, and it's an average of six different spots across the the paddle. Mm -hmm. I swear, if you just picked it up and set it down in the same exact place, it would give you different readings. Right. So I don't even think that that's a a viable testing method. Right. Um, so I think that the paddles is a really tough thing and the PPA at least is doing something to, de to be a deterrent. It's only been used once, but it's at least a deterrent. So I know I, remember I can't ask. This, yeah. But you haven't heard much of it since they introduced those policies, right? Where you can actually get, uh, like penalized for. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard of anybody using or challenging a paddle since. Right, but when that when that was first implemented, like where you can challenge it, I think it happened like once or twice. But then, like, nobody's done it since. Right. Do you think it's just like a, a universal understanding that it's like, hey, I'm not going to challenge you. You don't challenge me, <laughs> like, because the inconsistency is just across the board. Well, why it doesn't happen? I don't think that we want to want to look bad. 
you were like, why it doesn't happen. And I was like, oh, Wyatt Stone? Like, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Wyatt Stone? Pickleball yeah. Jr.? I thought you were just going to directly call him out. Pickleball Jr.? Pickleball <laughs> Jr., I, I think, is uh, he's using whatever he wants these days. Yeah. So he's probably getting some sort of juiced yeah. up paddle if he's smart. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, well, it's interesting because at least I know I can't go to a PPA with a paddle that's like 90 on the, on the reader, mm -hmm. right? I think people can sort of see, okay, this is an insane amount of spin. Maybe then it gets challenged, but that didn't exist at MLP. There was no paddle testing, mm -hmm. even an option. Mm -hmm. So why, why wouldn't I have right. pro XR say, well, they wouldn't do this, but maybe a, a less ethical company, their player could say, give me a paddle, make it look like the other ones, but make it 90 on the RZ, make it, make it a slingshot effect. There was zero repercussions at, at MLP, mm -hmm. which is an enormous problem for, for the legitimacy, uh, legitimacy of the, mm -hmm. the, of the sport. And, and I think PPA needs to get a way of figuring out how to, how to police the other element of, of paddles. So I think the closest that we've been to a good system was USA pickleballs at, at nationals where they tested everything ahead of time for, for RZ, but they also didn't test the, um, I keep forgetting the other test. They only tested one of the things on site and you had to get your paddle approved beforehand, which I think is good. So, hmm. yeah, it's an issue. Bigly. How long have we been going? I don't and know. how do we figure it out? Hour? <laughs> hour or so? The studio's too high tech. There is a clock in here. But I don't know what time we started. Yeah. What are we gonna cut I. this thing off at an hour or something? No, yeah. I think um I think we kind of got through all the topics. All right. So this is the first episode of the uh newly reformed pickle pod. And better than ever. Better than ever upped our studio game. We're coming for the jugular of some of these other pods that we will no longer mention by name. <laughs> Ever again. <laughs> They're dead to us. Um, until we until we surpass them or or put them in the uh in the pickleball podcast graveyard, then we can give them a little RIP. I like it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll just give them like, you know, we'll give them petty shouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like but it. uh Let's say, I don't know if that one we mentioned earlier is like, you know, 3,000 views on YouTube. We need to get to. Maybe like 3.5 thousand views. 27,000. Oh, easily. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to just put ad spend behind it until we <laughs> <laughs> just pay for it. <laughs> don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> They'll think you're serious. Yeah. Uh, but that'll do it. Okay, cool. I will. Uh, I think we're going to do this again next week. Perfect. Wow. I passed the interview, huh? Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. Let's do it again. That's Pickle Pod. <laughs>